One of the biggest pitfalls when you're first learning app development is understanding what to do if something goes wrong. So next I'll show you how you can solve common problems. I recommend you watch this episode even if you successfully completed the previous exercise, because chances are you will eventually make these kinds of mistakes. So it's good to know how to deal with them. Let's dive in. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through some of the mistakes that you might see as you're editing Flutter and Dart code. One example would be if you make a typo. So let's say when we added the alert is visible property, we misspelled it. And then later on when we wanted to use it, we get a red squiggly line under it. And if we hover our mouse over that, we see a message saying that alert is visible isn't defined for the type game page state. So that's telling us that Flutter doesn't know what alert is visible is. And that's just because we misspelled it. We get a blue squiggly line under the property definition. And if we hover over that, we say the value of the field alert is visible isn't used. So that's telling us that we have a typo. There's a discrepancy between where we defined alert is visible and where we tried to use it. So if we fix it, the error and warning go away. Another example of a mistake you might make is in the case of the items that you use. So let's say for one of these text widgets, we use a lowercase t on the text. Again, we get a red squiggly line underneath the text and we hover over it. It says the method text isn't defined for the type game page state. That means that Flutter just doesn't know what to do with a lowercase text. So like most widgets, the text is gonna be capitalized. Another mistake you might make is to leave out some syntax. So if I took out these parentheses on the onPressed handler, again, I get some red squiggly lines. Scroll up a bit here. So this one tells us that the argument type set bool can't be assigned to the parameter. And then this one down here says expected to find brace. So that's just telling us that we made some kind of syntactical error. So to fix that, we just need to make sure we get the right syntax back in. So we add those parentheses. Another example would be if we leave off a brace somewhere. So let's say I get rid of this brace here. Here we get a couple of errors saying expected to find brace. That's pretty direct in terms of what it's telling us. So when we have all these nested widgets, we get this kind of cascading set of parentheses and square brackets and braces. The good thing to know is that usually the error that you've made is somewhere around where these red squiggly lines are. So once we diagnose where we're missing a brace, we just add it back in. And the last mistake I wanna show is, let's say we put our property in the wrong place. So maybe we took alert is visible and put it inside the build method. So in this case, alert is visible is a variable that's local to the build function. And down here, we're saying this. So that means that alert is visible should be part of the game page state object that we're using. So that's just telling us that we've put the alert is visible definition in the wrong place. So again, we get a red squiggly line and a blue warning line. So I'll just move alert is visible back to where it was. And that fixes that error. The main takeaway from this episode is that as you're working in Dart and Flutter, the tools are there to help you. If you make mistakes, you're gonna see the editor indicating some type of thing that it doesn't understand. That will happen as you're editing code. But once you have all the code that you think needs to be there, if you still see some of those warnings or errors, just wanna look into what they are, take care of them. And then after that, you'll be able to build the project. So far, we've been dealing with errors, which are in red, but sometimes VS Code will give you a warning, which is in blue, or potentially another color depending on your theme setting in VS Code. What's the difference? Well, errors are fatal. If you get one, you cannot run the app until the error is fixed. On the other hand, warnings are just informative. The editor just says, you probably didn't mean to do this, but go ahead anyway. In my opinion, it's best to treat all warnings as if they were errors. Fix the warning before you continue and only run your app when there are zero errors and zero warnings. 
That doesn't guarantee the app won't have bugs, but at least they won't be silly ones.